Oh, should I? Uh, hello, E and Pish and Sergey. Hello. Hello, Pradesh, Sergey. Hi, Patrick, Toddy. Good morning. Hello, everyone. Hey, folks. Hey, sorry, you told us I'm not connected to my headphones and my headphones were in bag. Hi, Femen. <clears throat> hey, hi, everyone. Um, how was the KubeCon? Yeah, KubeCon, uh, it went well. And actually, uh, it's also the first time for me as attendees and also speakers. Yeah, we, nice. yeah, we, we also have a project booth for a uh, notary project and uh, we, uh, met some users, answered some questions. Um, actually, we we collected some some questions from the users. I think uh, we can share it uh, next time. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah, I was looking for any takeaways from that. So yeah, that would be good. That would be helpful. OK, uh, can we start? Let me start the live on YouTube. Uh, sorry, I met the same problem. Uh, Feynman, uh, I I remember that we fixed this account issue, but today I uh, meet the same issue. So um, so let's get started, and I will upload the uh, video later. Okay. Okay. Let me share the screen. Okay, you see, uh, I met the same issue, but I remember yesterday I did a troubleshooting with Fame and we fixed this issue. Anyway, uh, let's get started. Okay, this is the agenda items for today's meeting. Uh, we have four. Uh, the first one is about the CNCF annual review for notary project. The second one is uh, Pritesh will uh, share and review this uh, specification for the feature sign up to uh, data. Uh, the next one is uh, actually a request to review this uh, milestone. Uh, actually, this is from uh, last uh, uh, community meeting uh, about um, two more uh, issues in the milestone and also no prioritize. Uh, so we did an update. So hopefully that the community, especially Pritesh or Samuel can uh, take a look. Uh, the last one is uh, about, this was added by Toddy. Um, 
Okay. Yeah, we can talk about this later. So the first uh, item, uh, over to you, Feynman. Uh, you can drive the discussion. Uh, let me open in the page. Okay. Um, sorry, before we go through the, the agenda items, sh shall we, should we um, quickly pull up the action items from our previous meeting, especially from the last one? <laughs> uh not sure if we have the these actions in our yeah. record meetings I, I remember uh that's a good point uh actually some agenda items are related to uh, one of the topic um so th the first is uh let me through to yeah this one uh the annual review right uh Fabian, you will uh present it later uh, so good advisory, we will have a meeting for further discussion. And 1.1 .1 milestone, as I mentioned, I updated the milestone. Uh, the issues was uh, marked with, uh, priority, uh, with, with the priorities. So please, uh, Pradesh Samuel, to take a look. And also some of the issues were assigned to uh, individuals. Uh, and there are some random uh, discussions last time. Uh, I think uh, there are some actions, but uh, we don't need to follow up, follow it up today. Uh, for example, today, uh, we'll work on a proposal for the respect meeting. And Pradesh Samuel will um, prepare or write an issue to list uh, some issues for long-term investment. Uh, but for those, uh, I don't think we, we need to follow it up today. We we can uh, catch up later, maybe on Thursday meeting or next uh, community meeting next week. Okay, okay. I think most, uh, yeah, uh, the majority uh, will be uh, addressed uh, in today's meeting. Yeah, for one of the items uh, from the last meeting, I think, uh, removing the Doc Hub from the adoption page that I raised the PR to remove Doc Hub. So I think I may need more maintainers to help review that PR. Let me share the PR link in our chat box. Okay, yeah. Okay, then we continue on the annual review. Yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, everyone uh, in the meeting uh, reviewed this doc. Uh, I, I provided some comments. I think most of them were addressed by Feynman and also I saw uh, other maintainers like Steve also provided some comments. So do we jump into the comment directory or uh, we uh, give some time for uh, people in this meeting to review this doc? I think this is uh, uh, quite important because our target date is actually tomorrow, right? Feynman to submit the PR in the on the same staff. So it's better that today we can uh, review it and address the, the uh, major comments and then submit the PR uh, tomorrow. Yeah, I would need some, some time to do this. So I, uh, I sent the link of this doc. So maybe we can spend uh, around five minutes to review it. That okay? Yeah, that sounds good.
Yeah, I also want to mention that uh, uh, during the review, this annual review, from my side, uh, I found that uh, uh, the terminologies in existing governance doc uh, is not correct. So I created this PR. So it's better that we can also review and approve this PR before we uh, send out the PR for the end of review. So this will be another uh, actions for maintenance. Let's give one more minute for this document. Are we done? Start Only one, the, one more minute. Basically. Okay.
Ya, Murari. Uh, how about the others? Uh, I'm ready. Okay. Then let's walk through the comments. Uh, it seems uh, the new feature of this Hacker Markdown file. Uh, sorry, uh, Todi, please. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to kind of give a uh, uh, overall feedback. I think the background section needs uh, rework. Um, we should kind of explain what are the the goals of the project and kind of the recent history. Then uh, justifying, or I don't know, it sounds that we are actually concentrated too much in describing the tough implementation of uh, notary. Then the current notary project implementation in bigger part of the background section. So that's kind of my overall feedback. Okay. Oh. Hey, Lily, I have a question. Does this even need to cover the last one year or since the inception of the project? What are we trying to do here? So, Pratesh, your question to so, Raymond? Huh? Yeah, it's a general question. Like, are we just trying to cover last one year, what we did in last one year, or are we trying to describe what we did since the inception of the project? I think we should focus on the updates for last one year. You're correct. Okay. So, as you can yeah, see, the the metrics in the second section, most of the metrics are um, talked about the updates and the activities that happened in the last one year. Okay, that makes sense. Then as Todd said, we need to rework the background section. We are going way beyond like last one year. Yeah, I think I totally agree with Todd and Pratesh. Uh, we should remove some uh, redundant backgrounds and history around the project since this is not quite necessary for this annual review this year. We should simplify it and remove redundant information, especially the history about the project. Okay, is this note accurate? So we uh, we will focus on the uh, last year, right? Uh, the recent last year, and also, uh, as Todi mentioned, and also agreed by uh, Pradesh, we should revoke the background section to focus on the current Norte project goals and activities. Yeah, and also, also, I have a couple of minute picks there. We're just targeting especially enterprise. I think we should just not write that. It's like, uh, my bad. Uh, in the notary project goals, we are heavily focusing on enterprises and things like that. So let's not focus on understanding enterprise. It's just a nitpick. We can drop the word enterprise there. Yeah, that makes sense because we have 
been talking about how to sign arbitrary content and other places as well. So, Pradesh, your uh, comments is about. Uh, did you did you I will add, add some more comments? I think I, I think I will add some more comments after this meeting. Yeah, on that section. Uh, okay. Um... Okay, uh, I saw a comment from Sajay. Uh, yeah. Link to the Naughty Project Overview so that uh, we can avoid uh, repeating the background information. Uh, this is also a good point. Uh, Okay, and the Pratesh, you will add more comments right, uh, later. Yeah. Pratesh, you still have your hand raised. Uh, any other questions? So my bad, yeah, I just lowered the hand. Okay, uh, I think we also, uh, yeah, we are almost uh, 30 minutes. So please uh, leave more comments, uh, if any, after this meeting, so that the payment can start uh, working on it. Uh, let's continue to the second topic. Is that okay? Okay, the second topic is about sign up to data, the specification proposal by Pradesh. So Pradesh, do you want to drive the discussion or review comments? Pradesh, or you want me to? Yeah. Uh, actually, can you share the screen? Uh, Zoom is not letting me share the screen. It's just showing exclamation boxes. I think I'm sharing the screen, so. Okay, yeah, cool. Can you open the link then? Okay, you already opened the link, my bad, sorry. Uh, I think everyone have read the doc. I've just provided some updates since the last discussion. Uh, I have added the use case and requirement. As discussed in last meeting, I have added the use case and requirement section uh, at the top of the document. Uh, the first one, the first requirement of use case we were talking about, like signing the data, then verifying the arbitrary data. Uh, the third one was especially which was uh, which we wanted to add was we want user to sign the artifacts locally and then upload both signatures and artifact to the remote registry. And once the artifact have been uploaded to the uh, artifacts and have, signatures have been uploaded to remote registry, if 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 a user tries to verify them by calling this notation verify, it should work seamlessly, right? That was a third use case which we wanted to add. Hmm. I tried to, uh, like I tried investigation, uh, like I tried uh, digging around that and did some investigation. It. It is somewhat possible, not actually possible, unless we want to make arbitrary signing data to fit the OCI use case. So the, 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 there's a major difference when we sign an uh, OCI artifact as compared to non-OCI artifact. In, 
in OCR artifact, we are not actually scanning the artifact, we are scanning manifest of that artifact, right? But when we are scanning art, uh, the non OCR artifact, which we will be actually scanning those artifacts. We won't be creating a manifest or anything around that. It's just the indirection which we don't need at all. So in my opinion, it's not worth it to support both the, the third use case with the same, like it's, we cannot support that use case. Yes, there can be a workaround which I have documented at the end of the and at the end of the document that we can introduce a new command. Which what it can do is it can just take the local artifact, push it to repository, and sign it. Same thing we can do it for verify also. But combining this, this signing of OCI artifact and non OCI artifact then seems good. Then looks like a good option to me. Yeah, I, I think I would suggest that we can uh, focus the first two first, then we dig deeper for the third one. Is, is there any connection that the, if we want to consider the third requirement, we need to also do some work on the first two? Yes, so I think Patrick has, Patrick has a comment and some suggestions around the third one. Can you open the uh, comments, sir? Last comment which was added by Patrick, yeah. Is this one? And no, just do the last comment. Just scroll all the way down on the comments. Yeah, I mean, they change the, how can we change the UI? Yeah, mm. the, yeah, they recently changed some behavior, so it's very, yeah. very hard uh, to find. Actually, yes, um, the last comment. Actually, this is doable as long as we are still signing a descriptor. Uh, but do you want to talk about that? And then we can discuss that one before we move to the actual other thing, like other sections of the doc. Uh, I think the first two is current uh, focus and the most important one, unless the third one has some connections. I mean, from specification point of view, we also need to consider the third one, then uh, we, we can discuss. Otherwise, I would suggest that we can uh, I, agree. It it's, I, I agree. I agree. Uh, that I don't want to take any one way though, so that we don't have to make any breaking changes. That, that's the reason I added third, and we should talk about the third before we move ahead. I think Toddy has his hand raised. Yeah. Toddy, please. Yeah, I. Uh, so I'm thinking about the third one, and I see Patrick's comment. I think those. So. Um, do we assume, let me ask the question actually, do we assume that we always will sign a descriptor? Because I don't think that is true for signing art arbitrary data. Like the descriptor is very OCI specific and I may want to actually sign like file and never push it to, to a registry and that doesn't have a descriptor. The only item that is controversial is the media type. Besides that, the digest and the size is pretty much standard for uh, a file. So if you're saying that we don't want to sign a descriptor, the only thing we're saying is that you don't need a media type, right? There are three fields in the descriptor, that's why. So I yeah. think I have added a section that uh, if you scroll down a bit, I have mentioned all the three fields and why they are required. So like, yeah, media type was the only optional thing. I scroll up a little bit, a little bit. The size is basically required to avoid, uh, I forgot. Uh, can you scroll up a bit? Sorry, scroll up. Oh, yeah, here you go. So it, it was required for endless data attack. We need size of the artifacts we are verifying and digest basically to ensure the integrity of that. Do so we, we need, need this... both? Do we need, we need digest in size? Yes. Typically, it's it prevents some infinite amount of data from any arbitrary size. Like, think about this. Uh, either a consumer of the artifact has to make a call, okay, this is the max size of the artifact I will consume. Or notation or notary project can provide a guarantee saying that, okay, 
this is the size of data which consumer is the, the producer of artifact is saying this is the size of the data so you can just read it from there and stop processing once you reach that limit so it's like we are moving an assumption from consumers to to make sure like from consumer of the artifact so they don't have to make an assumption that because typically actually so when you verify let's say even the the checks term right you know okay i can like and i i remember we had a discussion about the media type and we had and and we are proposing here to pack this as a as a descriptor of the and to sign this descriptor is that the proposal sorry i have not read the uh the HackMD document. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, it's 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 similar fields. I mean, you can think of it like a descriptor for convenience sake because it's already living there. Um, but the only thing is, we're using a media type of octet stream, which means anything, and uh, the size is there for a protection um, because you don't want to you don't mm -hmm. want infinite infinite unknown types, right? Like if you want to allocate it in memory or something like that, and then the digest is a mandatory field. So the descriptor is very um very small but there's no annotations or anything like that from the descriptor these are the only three fields that we're saying okay. uh just to correct the way we'll use annotations to store customer data customer defined data we'll just <laughs> okay. on annotation. yeah okay so so that's fine um yeah so then Toddy, yes then most likely it'll end up in the same shape which means it's convenient to use a descriptor and since we need all these three fields, I thought it descriptor is the way to go. Okay, makes sense. Uh, Patrick, do you want to talk about your comment before we go ahead? Like, I just want to make sure that we don't take any one way over here by saying that we won't support that third scenario. Yeah, so this is uh, one way to do it. So currently, uh, in an OCI compliant registry, we are signing the manifest, right? Um, so for a uh, for file or any arbitrary data, uh, if we want to upload the file into the registry, we will have the files blob descriptor under the layer field, right? And then we, we attach the signatures as URL. And when we verify it, we will find all the signatures attached to the artifact, but that signature signed the file blob. It signed uh, so, the layer instead of the so manifest. What? So what you are saying is create a manifest out of the local file and then sign the manifest, a descriptor the manifest, manifest, basically. Yes, the manifest is created automatically when you push the file into uh, the registry. I, I I think there's a scenario where the registry doesn't even exist, right? Like the, the point here is like, you don't have the notion of a registry in any of these contexts. So introducing another construct of the registry in the in the signing path is that what we want to do um, i thought the idea was to avoid that Toddy, uh, I, I think everything is the same uh in terms of the registry yeah Toddy has his hand yeah and i am with saji actually we would like to avoid any kind of oci constructs in in signing so i'm having a hard time uh figuring out like Look, from experience point of view, what I expect when I sign something is uh, I have a blob, right, uh, that I want to sign, like binary file, doc file, whatever it is, file. Uh, I have this this file. I do that some operation. I create another file that has the signature, right? And I understand that this signature needs to have special format, but there is no OCI involved in that and my question is now i'm having hard time kind of figuring out 
what will be this second file that actually contains the signature. And I can put these two files in my pocket or on a thumb drive, move them somewhere else. And on that different location, I can validate them without even involving anything with the, the registry. So registry in this particular case does not exist. So that's the one scenario that at least I, I know uh, customers are interested in. The second scenario is like, I have a file, I have the signature file. So two different files. Now, actually, after I created those things, I want to push both to the registry. And what will happen with this experience? That is, and right now I'm really having a hard time when we go into this specific, like we need a descriptor, we need a, uh, if we can describe it from experience point of view, how that will look like and what do I need to do? And that will be much easier for us and for users to understand what's happening, if that helps. Uh, uh, I, I just reply in the. No. Uh, Sajay, you are unmuted. Oh, thank oh, okay. you. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, My dog is so, not uh, lying. Uh, <laughs> I assume okay. that. So I just reply in the uh, inside the uh, chat uh, message. So basically, yes, uh, no OCF blobs. Again, uh, generating manifest is not is not deterministic from tools too. So uh, we cannot use uh, notation just to uh, gener that generate the manifest for those blobs. Makes sense. So we are on the same page, right? Um, so the question becomes, if you sign a file in your file system and you save the signature at your file system, then if you want to distribute it, through registry, your signature won't verify. That's the I think we, yeah, I think we want to be very clear. We are, we, there is no concept of distributing with the registry in this scenario. The registry is out of scope and all transmission and distribution is out of band. And yes, they might decide to custom bundle the signature and custom bundle the file and put it in a registry in some form, but it's up to the user to compose them together and verify. So I, I think saying that you want to distribute it with the registry is not the scenario that I'm hearing. Does that make sense, Patrick? There is no take the signature and distribute it with the signature as a follow-up. Uh, yeah, so I remember there's a, there's a scenario mentioned by Todi in this issue. I pasted the link in the chat. So I I think there's a, there's a scenario that we need we need a registry to be involved. This the, is the, after uh, after the signature is created. This is scenario after the signature is created. Yes. And the way the way it will work is you download the signature, you download the artifact locally and then do the local verification. Right. You won't, you won't be able to use notation verify command. You will have to use notation verify blob or something like that. Think of it as an offline verification, not online. You won't, the registry won't be involved there. The registry is just a, just a, a, a way to store data. That's what notation we consider in this scenario. Um, so for this, for the second uh, order uh, from the Hack Markdown specification point of view, this is the third uh, 
status the narrow. So that means uh, user can use the registry for distribution of the, uh, for example, spawn and its uh, signature, but the user cannot use uh, notation verify it from the registry. User uh, needed to download the uh, spawn and signature first, then use notation verify uh, yeah. blob kind of a command to verify it, yeah. right? I, I think that's that's fair. We, we not, I don't think the expectation is that notation verify works natively, um, but notation verify for a blob will work. And so you need to acquire the blob in some way. Uh, totally, please. That may be a little bit confusing for users because then we need to be uh, explicit in the errors uh, when we actually, when you do notation verify and you try to, to verify a blob signature, uh, we should be explicit in the error message to say, hey, you're trying to verify blob, right? Yeah. Uh, but I think like, uh, uh, I, I don't remember how Pritesh structured the commands, but I think that should be the same command with a switch for a blob, not mutation verify dash blob, which is a separate command, at least from experience point of view. Like when I'm verifying, doesn't matter whether I'm verifying OCI artifact in a registry or, or a signature that is actually not in a registry, command should be notation verify. So I can we may default that. to OCI but that may be the default value, so I don't need to specify OCI location. So technically, we cannot do that. There are multiple reasons why we cannot do it. Like, technically, you can do it, but we don't want to do it. There are multiple reasons for that first one. And when you verify a local artifact or a blob, you don't not make the remote call. So when you specify notation, verify a registry URI, but it doesn't whether to interpret as a remote URI or an artifact on local disk. And we don't want to confuse notation for that because there are class of attacks which are possible to go and implement this. For example, if you have a file name abcd.com on the host, I can I can spawn a registry or I can spawn a server on that host and provide you a wrong files and to verify and things like that. So we don't want to do that also. So we want to take a customer intent or user intent what they are trying to verify. So the, the way to do it is either you take a separate flag or you do it with a new sub command called sign or sign blog. I, I, what I meant is separate flag. Yes, the, the reason I went with a it's a sub command instead, like I debated over that. The reason I went with sub command instead of flag is first, there are a couple of flags which are not applicable for sign blob use case. For example, login, log out, insecure registry, and there are a bunch of other commands which are not applicable for this use case. So either we have to add a documentation for that, okay, these, are command, these flags are not applicable in this use case. That is one of the one of the major reasons I didn't went with this approach of having a hyphen hyphen blog. And the second is because I think Cosign already has this approach, so I was like, okay, let's follow the trend of what they are doing. We can also do unless unless uh, unless we can find a which is better than that. I would support. Let's follow the trend there. And usually for CLIs, if you follow the trend, it's a good thing. You don't have to learn and use indexes for different tools. Yeah, so I don't know. It's my own kind of experience that having multiple subcommands for kind of the same type of operation makes it confusing for users but also also think about this if you use verify they don't know whether we are doing the verification of artifacts stored in oci or a local one so we have to make that distinction apparent like it should be like first class reason for that okay this is a separate command doing a separate functionality in itself so for flag it would be like 
I think of a flag as if you are adding a functionality or you are tweaking some tweaking some minor minor behavior of that command, not a major one. I'm 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 open like I'm open to suggestions here because I did debate on it. Initial my take was to use flag, then I moved it to sub command after reading more about it on internet. Yeah, I, I'm kind of looking at our competitor six store right now. I have verify, verify attestation, verify blob, verify blob attestation. So I'll have verify for too many things, like which kind of clutters the, the CLI a lot. That's kind of my my view of the problem. What uh, what's we, the we certainly can do a better design. <laughs> I mean, is is it subcommands or dash commands? It's a subcommand. So in this case, we're recommending a dash command, isn't it? So sign dash Moab. No, sorry. It's a, okay. I didn't understand what you mean with dash command. Yes, they are dash command. So they have verify blob, verify dash attestation, verify dash uh, whatever it is. So taking this approach, like, I'll have verify dash for everything that I want to verify because it has some specific logic, which I I believe that makes the CLI too cluttered with too many commands. I think it's much cleaner design if we do notation, verify is the command, and then you have dash dash what exactly you want to verify. I'm not sure about attestations. I have to go and read, but I'm not sure why they fought for attestations. Attestation can go with with a flag. Basically, I'm not sure how they're uploading the attestation. Also, also, like, yeah, I do see. Yeah, because concern. you can you can have like the uh, the argument that attestations are different than. Uh... I mean. The way they would sign would be similar, right? It's just the metadata. I'm not sure how, what they are considering attestations. It's the metadata or what? So like it's I cannot in, comment on it. In cosine is different. Like they initially they went with the, um, not with the uh, kind of the referrer types, but okay, then doing I mean, it differently. Enough. And now you need yeah, but. My point is like first we don't need to follow what they do. Yes, right? I do agree. Because I don't think that so, they have the actually a good design. And second is we can make our design much cleaner and uh, then actually doing something in the middle. That's my point. I agree the I don't deny it, but there's another concern that how the flex doesn't make sense for local signing, like arbitrary data signing. And the way actually we are doing signing is drastically different. Probably we are not, apart from the actual signing library, we are not sharing anything there. Uh, I think uh, a short summary here. I think the first day we, we discussed the, the the narrows, right? Uh, let me switch to this. So uh, we, we agree that uh, based on the Scenarios. The first thing is that we, we sign a local file or spawn, and the signature is generated uh, locally, right? This is the uh, scenario, and I think this is the most important one we needed to, to do. And we also uh, discussed about how to distribute uh, via registry, and I think we agree that uh, if user want to distribute the spawn and uh, its uh, signature uh, via uh, registry, a notation verify command will not work uh, to verify the spawn and signature from the registry. User need to download it first and use the verify with a flag to verify the spawn and signature, right? So these are what we we are aligned, right? So if that is the, uh, let me check the comments. So if that is what we aligned, I would suggest the one action that we needed to do is to make the two scenarios more clearly, because from from at least currently from the second one, it is not clear that the user want to verify the spawn and signature 
uh, as a blob in the registry or user need to download it first, then verify it. Uh, I think this is the first thing we need to make it clear uh, by writing a good uh, uh, scenario. Uh, the next thing is uh, about the whether we use the dash command or use the flag. I think we we had some discussion. I, I would suggest that maybe Pritesh, you can uh, write uh, the command, for example, notation sign with all the flag we currently supported. I, I mean, uh, for example, for the uh, OCI layout and for the new one you want to introduce uh, for sign up with data, and we can uh, we can see whether there are too many flags that we need to consider another sub command. We, we can do some comparison. Sure, let's do that. I will take a shot for that. Yeah, uh, I think that currently we have a notation sign. By default, we put the reference. The reference means the image in the in the registry, right? Then later we 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 also have the feature sign local container image. So we need a flag to to specify that the image is in local. Then we have this feature, we will assign uh, blobs, files. Then we need to introduce another flag. I, I, I think it's better that we can list all the uh, command with flags to see whether it's too, too complex for the user. And based on that, we can decide whether we need a new command for, for this purpose. So From my side, I, yeah. Uh, Everything would be blob unless the way we calculate the hash or dice signature is different. Everything would go into blob. There won't be a separate for file or anything like that. It's a call out there. If the way you calculate the hash or the way you calculate what on what you what you are signing is different, that's that's the only scenario we will have a new command. Otherwise, we won't. Yeah. Uh. So I would suggest Pradesh, you can list the the command with flag here. And we can also think about uh, uh, the local uh, container image flag. We, we can discuss together. Uh, yeah, this is the second one. Uh, I think the third one, we basically agree that we will assign, we, we call it a descriptor because uh, these three other, uh, for, for the OCI, the, they are called in the, uh, uh, the properties under the descriptor. But uh, anyway, no matter it is the code descriptor or, or anything mm -hmm. else, at least we agree that we, when we assign arbitrary data, we will assign also consider digest and the size, right? And the meta type will be uh, optional. And by default yeah. to this overhead screen. That's correct. Also, in the code, we couldn't call it descriptor, we call it target artifact. I just used the wrong word here. Might be just in call, we call it target artifact. What we yeah, we, when we actually sign it. Yeah, we, we sign a target uh, artifact. Uh, I think uh, it's also a JSON format, right? It includes the digest field, the size field, and the media type. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, for now, uh, I think maybe Pritesh, you, you can start writing specification for at least for the, for, for the uh, signature payload that we want to uh, sign for for the arbitrary data, right? We we have this uh, agreement, so I think you can start uh, writing this uh, specification for Makes sign. Sense. Yeah, for for the for the signature payload. Then we can review that specification because we we have a uh, some alignment here. Then for the for for the uh, command with flags, it's uh, it's uh, the specification for the CLI. Uh, as I suggested, you you can list all the flags, then we can dis we we can discuss. Okay, can we at least like get, can I get some comment in the next section? Trust policy and trust store. Uh, yeah, we have four minutes. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, for CLI we can defy it because it will go into CLI spec anyway, which will be done later on during implementation. We can do that in parallel. Yeah. Uh, for the trust policy. So in trust policy, we are saying that we will rename registry scopes to 
to scopes because in verification there is nothing in like when you're saying an arbitrary anonymous here data there is no registry interaction so we'll just rename it to scopes and also in verification since now we don't so earlier we were determining the registry scope from the domain name of the registry like actually the name of the registry when you used, used to pass the uh, artifact uri or like yeah, image uri now we will say that user will user will have to pass a new field called policy scope in the cli that would be an optional field it won't be a mandatory field because there would be always a default scope uh for me, I think it's okay to rename it to, to scope because we are also handling the case that uh, uh, the the trust we, we want to also verify um, arbitrary data, right? Not related to any, I would say, registry. Uh, I'm fine with rename. Um, but my question is here, should we, is this just an example? Because non OCI, I don't think a user understand what is non OCI. Oh, it's an example. It's an example. It's, it's scope example. is basically yeah. Scope is basically a random string, and we are just doing a string match there. Um, any comments from other people? I think if we have some kind of uh, alignment, uh, no major uh, objection on this proposal, I think uh, Pritesh, based on the timeline, you can start writing the specification, including the signature payload and also the uh, trust policy at trust store, then we can review those PR directly. And for the command, uh, I think we discussed and we think flag will be the good proposal, but uh, Pritesh, you can try to list all the flags we want to introduce, then we can uh, have further discussion. Uh, if it is really needed, we, we can consider other command, but uh, for now, I think flag is the uh, is the option we preferred. Makes sense. And I think, can you scroll further down? Is there anything else left? I think no, but. Okay, I think, yeah, there's nothing remaining there. Yeah. Um, I will write, uh, sorry, please. Yeah, I'm like, uh, can everyone just take like spend a few minutes in offline and just add comments? Yeah, I will take an extra item to, to add a section for us. Uh, for adding a flag or as a new command, I will just write a section there. But apart from that, if everyone can take the like fifteen minutes to review this talk and provide the provide the comment, that would be helpful. Mm. Yeah, we we will have an, another meeting. Um, so I will write the action and send it out. And for the scenarios, uh. Uh, I will uh, write the scenarios to make it clear for, for the scenarios we want to support uh, based on the uh, on, on the one that uh, Todi provided, I will make it more clear. And for, for other actions, I uh, I think expect uh, I expect that the pretest you can start writing the uh, specification PRs so that we can review PRs directly. Good is that? Thank you. Um, Pritesh, you just send another link. Uh, same one, the same one. It? I think not, oh. I think not everyone has reviewed it, so I'm just sharing it again. It's okay. The same link. Yeah. Please, uh, any other comments? Please add it to the to the document. But uh, uh, I think uh, we we are good to start writing the PRs for the specification now. Yeah. Okay. Um, back to our agenda, the, we, we also, uh, I also updated the milestones. So please, uh, Samuel or Pradesh, you can take a look because some items are on your name. So if you think it is not feasible, you can move it to the next milestone or 
to the future milestone. Please take a look. And also we updated the, with priorities. Please also verify whether the priorities works for you. Uh, and for the last item, I will figure out how to do it. Okay. Uh, that's for today's community meeting. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye.